Welcome to CAT Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 11.4. Now we're given the circuit over here and we are asked to find the average power which is absorbed by each element in the circuit. So we know for sure that for reactive loads or for storage elements like an inductor and capaci or a capacitor, we know that the average power absorbed for each of these is zero watts. So we have five elements in the circuit and we have solved two now. So know that this is the case and you can go in the textbook just to verify or just to check why. You can also go ahead and actually calculate, you should get the same value of zero watts. So I leave that to you as homework to actually do the calculations or just check the reason behind this. So let's go to the other elements and to solve for all those, maybe I might do one of them just to show you. For the other elements, let's assign loop currents I1 and I2. So looking at loop one, we're actually gonna to proceed to find this current and it's gonna help us to find the voltage across there and as well as the current in this loop, which is gonna help us to compute the power associated with that voltage source as well as that voltage source, so everything else. So we've done two elements and we're left with three elements. So for loop one, as we go around this loop, which is associated with the I1, we have negative 40, then we have eight I1, then we have, this is negative J2, I1, subtract I2, that is loop one. We now move on to loop two. So loop two over here. Let's look at loop two. I have negative J2 and we have J4 and we have the 20 with an angle of 90 degrees. Going around that loop, we have negative J2, I2, subtract I1, plus J4, multiply by I2. Then we have plus 20 with an angle of 90 degrees. This is the voltage source. It's equal to zero. Now let's just combine the like terms in each of these equations. This is also equals to zero, not forgetting that. So combining the like terms, we have eight and that we have eight subtract J2 associated with I1. Then for I2, we only have this, which is positive J2. Negative and negative become positive. Then we're going to take the constant to the other side of the equal sign. Therefore, we're going to have that as our first equation. So to just check if you did that correctly, eight, yeah, that is correct. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to group the like terms or the terms which are associated with each of the variables. So here we have, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we have on this side. We have J2 associated with I1. And we have negative J2 and J4. So J4 subtract negative. So J4 subtract that or J4 added to that is going to be J2 as well. This is for I2. Then we're going to do the same thing by taking this to the other side of the equal sign. Now I have two equations and we now have to find I1 and I2. One of the simplest methods which you can do is elimination, which is carried out by either subtracting either of these. So I'm just going to say equation one subtract equation two. So the coefficients of each of the variables is going to, so this is going to subtract that, this is going to subtract that, and the constants are also going to subtract. So taking the coefficient of I1 in the first equation, which is eight minus J2. So eight minus J2 subtract J2. We're gonna have eight subtract J4 associated with I1. Then we're gonna move on to J2 subtract J2, which is gonna cancel out and the only variable, and that is what we basically wanted to do. The only variable which you're gonna have is I1 because J2 subtract J2 for I2 results in zero R2. Then finally, we're going to have 40 subtract this, which is going to result in 40 plus that same constant. So now we can proceed to find our I1, which is going to be 40, it's 20 with an angle of 90 degrees, divided by 8, subtract J4. And you should find an I1 of 5 with an angle of 53.13 degrees in amperes, right? Now coming to I2, 
you can go back to the second equation. I think this one's the simplest to actually break down and find a relationship between I2 and I1. So taking this, this here, you can say, or you can see that I2 is equal to Right, divided by j2. And so you're just going to substitute your i1 over here, which we just found down here. So substitute your i1 there and then put everything else in the calculator. And you should find a value of i2, which is equals to 13.6 with an angle of negative 162.897 degrees. And that is in amperes. So we now found i1 and I2, and both of those are going to help us to find the power which is associated, which is absorbed by each of the elements. So let's start with the voltage source or the 40 volt voltage source, which is over here. Using the passive sign convention, you see that the I1 actually goes through the negative terminal of this first, and we're gonna put that in, we're gonna take that into consideration. We know that the average power is equal to a half Vm Im, cosine of the angle of V subtract the angle of I, right? So you're gonna do that quickly over here with respect to the voltage source. You're gonna say negative 40 because the I1 encounters the negative first. Then you're gonna say the amplitude of the current, which is I1 that flows through there, which is five. We found that previously. Then you're gonna multiply by cosine of the angle of the voltage is zero and the angle of our current is 53.13 degrees. So putting this into your calculator should give you a value of P40, which is equals to negative 60, negative 60 watts. Now moving on to the next element, we have a resistive load or we have a resistive element. And for a resistive element, let's say we were to proceed to find the voltage. As you can see, the voltage which is substitute here is a voltage which is across the element itself. And therefore we actually have to find the voltage which is across there, which can find by this. But if you look here, there'll be no change to the angle associated with this. So VR is going to have the same angle as the angle of our I1 which means when we finally compute the power absorbed, we're going to have this same angles over here. So the angles are going to cancel out to zero because after computing the voltage across the element itself, which is a re resistive element, we still have that same angle. Now, if you say x subtract x, it's going to be 0. And cosine of 0 is actually 1. So we can just do uh, a shortcut every time you're asked to find the power absorbed by a resistive element, like this 8 ohm resistor, and say that the average power which is absorbed is just Vm, Im, because we know for sure, and I just showed you how cosine of the angle of V subtract the angle of I is Z is one. So the angle inside the cosine argument is zero, which result in just one. So this is basically one. The part we were supposed to have cosine of one subtract the other is basically one. Sorry about that. So this is just one. You can just omit that. So let's proceed to do that. We're just going to say half of and the voltage across the... So you're just going to take the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor, which is going to be the value of the resistor multiplied by the amplitude of the current through it, which is 5, that is the amplitude of I1. And then now we're going to substitute the amplitude of I1 again, because it's part of the formula. And from this, you can see that this is 4 multiplied by 5, which is 20, and then 20 multiplied by 5, which is 100. So you have 100 watts, which is the power absorbed by your 8 ohm resistor. So now I have one, two, three, four elements and only left with one element to go, which is our 20 volt voltage source over here. So this one, which is also, it's basically J20, right? So this one here, it has I2 flowing through it and I2 flows through the positive first. So that is fine. We're just going to take it as it is. The amplitude of that is 20 and the current through it, the amplitude of the current through it is 13.6. 
and you're going to have cosine of the angle of the voltage subject the angle of our current which is negative 162.897 degrees punching this into your calculator should give you an absorbed power of negative 40 watts so we can now do a summary down here for the 40 volt source we have a value of negative 60 watts for the 8 ohm resistor we have a value of 100 watts for the capacitor we have 0 watts for the inductor we have 0 watts and finally for our j20 voltage source we have negative 40 watts so let's just quickly analyze these answers so this one we are asked to find the power absorbed remember now we know for sure that current sources and voltage sources do not absorb they actually supply so this negative here it actually compensates for that counter action or the opposite action we are asked to find something which absorbs or the value of the average power absorbed but this actually supplies and that is why we have a negative everywhere else where we have a, a positive like here for resistive load it is because this element actually absorbs right and wherever we have the negative it shows that it does the the opposite action of supplying and that is why we have a negative here and a negative at the top as well and then for these two if you have a capacitor or an inductor they actually absorb zero average power and i can just quickly show you with the j4 over here right so if we were to compute the average power absorbed by uh, this inductor over here you'd say half of so j4 is simply four with an angle of 90 degrees so we're gonna have the voltage associated with it so which is going to result from let's say um let's say four with an angle of 90 degrees multiplied by your i2 which is 13.6 with an angle of something 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 you can just check it's a value now after doing this you're basically going to have four multiplied by 13.6 right as your amplitude and you're going to have an angle associated with your voltage of 90 degrees plus 162.897. This is going to be the angle associated with the voltage, right? So let's take this into account. This is our voltage amplitude. Then we have our current amplitude of 13.6. Now inside the cosine argument, which you're going to multiply all of this by, you have your voltage here you have your voltage value of 90 degrees the voltage angle of 90 degrees plus 162.897 and this same value it actually has to it has to subtract so this is actually minus because the original one was minus and when we multiply we actually add so that is going to be that so sorry that's going to be like that so now we have to subtract the angle of our current which is negative that now if you look in here we're only going to have that and that is going to cancel out and we're going to have cosine of 90 degrees now cosine of 90 degrees is zero so zero multiplied by everything else is going to result in an average power absorbed by j4 of zero watts so you don't actually have to go through the trouble of computing that just wherever you see an inductor or capacitor and they ask you to find the average power absorbed absorbed this is a keyword you know that the average power of both of those is zero watts so that that was just me showing you how to do that or just how to prove that and now if you got into this point of the video and you haven't subscribed please subscribe and if you like this video just go ahead and give it a thumbs up peace